Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today's video, which is another collaboration video with Dina Tollefson, entitled The Totally Awesome Challenge. I took part in Dina's last challenge at the end of July and painted a blue-footed booby bird for the turquoise challenge and I really enjoyed it, so thought it would be fun to take part in this one too. For this totally awesome challenge, all you had to do was to draw or paint a frog or toad in whatever medium you like and upload the video today using the hashtag totally awesome challenge and Dina will create a playlist of all those who've taken part. So go and check out her channel using the link in the description box to see what everyone else has done. For my painting, I decided to paint a frog using my watercolours and I'll put a link to the reference picture I used from Pixabay in the description box along with a list of all the art supplies I used if you want to go and check them out. So let's get on with the painting. I used a Prismacolor Colour Raise pencil for my outline sketch this time as I really wanted to work on painting in some realistic looking water on the lily pad the frog's sitting on and I didn't want any graphite showing through on the finished piece. This one is the colour Grass Green. I also used it to mark in some of the darker areas on the frog's body before I started painting. I masked around the edges of my paper using frog tape, what else, as I wanted to get a nice crisp outline and then I pre-mixed the colours I wanted to use for the background. I chose transparent green gold, may green and sap green to begin with. Then it was time to pre-wet my paper, as I wanted to use the wet in wet technique for the background. I spray my paper lightly with water first and use a flat brush to spread it out evenly. I find this is a really good way to get an even coverage of water over my paper quickly and it avoids any problems with one area of paper drying before the rest. You don't want puddles of water though, so I lift up any excess with my brush and soak it up on a paper towel. While the paper is wet, I begin to drop in some paint. I start off with the transparent green gold. And then I add in the May green and the sap green. I can use a paper towel to lift up any paint from the areas I want to keep lighter. With that dry, I can then define some of the darker edges of the lily pad using more concentrated paint. With that dry again, I can start to add in the darker shadow area under the frog's body. For this, I pre-wet my paper again before dropping in more concentrated sap green, mixed with a bit of neutral tint. I let the paint bleed out onto the wet paper, and add in more concentrated paint around the frog's feet too. Then I do the same process at the top part of the lily pad here, so pre-wetting the paper and dropping in paint. With a darker layer on the lily, I now start to add some detail to the edge of the waterline. I'm using the tip of my paintbrush with sap green on it for this and although it's not as dark as it needs to be yet, at this stage I'm just mapping out the main shapes that I can see here using my reference photo as a guide. Now I can start to add in some lighter shading to the area above that waterline and for this I use diluted transparent green gold and I'm painting on dry paper. I leave the white of the paper for the brighter highlights. So with a rough map of where the highlights and some of the lighter areas are on that waterline, I go in with some concentrated neutral tint to paint in the dark area of water here in the foreground, and to the right side of the lily working on dry paper again. 
I also darken up the area between the two lilies at the top, but because I want the background to be out of focus, I pre-wet my paper before adding paint, and this helps to keep my edges soft. Ok, so it's finally time to start painting the frog. I begin by painting in his eye using a small detail brush and some neutral tint. I've not used any masking fluid, so I have to be really careful to paint around any highlights in the eye that I want to leave white. I'm painting wet on dry here so I can get those details in, and I do the same on the other eye. I also mark in his nostril and begin to map out some of the darker shapes and markings around his eyes too. Then I use the same detail brush to mark in the frog's mouth and the dark marking down his back and around his front leg. For this I'm using neutral tint again and painting on dry paper. I've let that all dry and now I'm going to start putting some colour down on his body. For this I'm using watery transparent ochre and I've gone back to using a slightly larger brush, so this one's a size 8. I paint in this first layer all over the front of the frog's head and chest area including his front feet and whilst the paint's wet I drop in some more concentrated paint to the darker areas on his neck and around his ear. Now in case you were wondering the frog's ear or tympanum is that circle shape you see behind the eyes. I didn't know that but found out during the process of this video so I thought I'd share it with you. Now I'm painting some of the darker folds and creases around that front leg area and for this I'm using sepia. Ok, now to paint the frog's back, and here the skin is really bumpy with a lot of detail, so for this I begin by dotting in colour with a fairly dry brush on dry paper, to give the impression of texture without getting into too much detail. I also add a glaze of the may green to change up the colour above his mouth a bit too, and added a bit more detail around the eye and ear. Once this was done I turned my attentions back to the water, but this time worked on the ripples around the frog's body. To make these look more realistic I tried to ensure I had a lot of contrast between the darkest areas nearest the frog's body and the white of the highlights. For the shaded areas in between I added a dilute mix of ultramarine blue. After I put some of those details in I realised I needed to darken up the shadow under the frog's body and use the same paint mix as before with sap green and neutral tint. At this point I felt like the painting was starting to take shape but as with any of my watercolour paintings it takes several layers to build up the colour and value I need to make it really pop. So it's a bit of a back and forth process, intensifying the values in one area highlights the need to repeat the process in another and there was a lot of that in this painting, so it really was a bit of a challenge, but a fun one. A not so fun challenge on the other hand this week has been learning new editing software, as the free one I've been using up until now keeps corrupting my video files, I have no idea why, but thank you to the support from Amy Howard of Amy Howard Art, I have managed to work it out if this video reaches you that is. So all I can say is if this video is not as smooth or slick as it could be, it can only get better, so bear with me on that one and a huge thank you to Amy for helping me out. So let's get back to the frog and here I'm building up some colour on his back leg. For this I'm adding in some olive green yellow to my palette and using a watery mix to glaze over the colour I've already got down. There are quite a lot of bright highlights here too, so I leave those areas free of colour and soften any paint edges with a damp brush. 
For the detail around the frog's back leg, I start to add in some more concentrated sepia and darker green to mark out and intensify some of those creases and folds, and I do the same around the front leg too. Now using that olive green yellow again, I paint over the area of the frog's body nearest the waterline. For this I'm using quite a dry brush on dry paper. This dry brush technique is really good for adding texture and allows the colour from previous layers to show through the gaps in the paint. I have got a video on the dry brush technique where I used it to paint a squirrel, so I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one if you want to go and check it out. Okay, so having built up the colours on the body a bit more, I want to intensify some of those facial features too. I darken up the line of the mouth and add a brighter layer of sap green around his nose area. Then I add more neutral tint to his eyes and the dark line running down his back, painting on dry paper. I quite liked how the frog was filling out so now turn my attentions back to the lily pad to increase value and contrast and give this area a bit more depth. For this I'm using the wet in wet technique again as I don't want any harsh edges. I'm using more concentrated sap green for this and like I did before mix in a bit of neutral tint around the edges. I use sap green again to glaze over the lower part of the lily pad as well and brighten it up a bit and I try and leave some lighter lines where the veins of the lily pad are. I still want to keep those soft edges towards the bright area of water around the frog so I just soften those out with a damp brush. the water's edge I go back to painting on dry paper and study my reference photo carefully for this bit as on the face of it it looked a bit tricky. To try and simplify this area though rather than thinking of the water as water I took a section at a time and tried to recreate the shapes I could see in each section and to be honest I think getting a realistic look for water is more about getting your values right so getting your darks dark enough and your lights light enough but it's something I'm still working on and probably the most challenging part of this painting for me. I continue to add several glazes over the lily pad to slightly change the overall colours as I thought necessary and made sure to let each layer dry fully before adding the next one. Then when I was happy with that I wanted to add a bit more colour and detail to the area of leaf at the bottom here. Again I made sure to leave lighter areas where the veins would be to help add realism and prevent the lily pad from looking too flat. For the lily pads in the background I still wanted to keep those out of focus and a bit blurry to help make the frog stand out but I did go in and paint another layer here to bring it into line with the values in the rest of the painting. I used a flat brush to pre-wet the whole leaf before adding in paint. After taking a step back to reassess things, I decided then to go back to the main lily pad again and add another more concentrated glaze of sap green. So you can see what I mean about it being a bit of a backwards and forth process, but I did really enjoy it. Now whilst I'm painting in a few more details, if you're still watching that is, next week's video, all being well, will be up on Thursday instead of Friday and I have an exciting announcement to make so make sure you look out for that and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon to be notified as soon as that's available to watch. I also have a very exciting video going up the Friday after that, so that's on the 20th of September, which you will not want to miss, but I'm not saying any more than that at the moment, so you'll have to wait and see. So I've added in a few more layers to the lily pad and I was quite pleased with how it looked but after allowing it to dry I decided to crisp up the waterline and finished off with a bit of coloured pencil. I hadn't planned on doing this at the start or else I might have used a smoother hot press paper but I wanted to make sure there was a really neat edge to that shadow where the water meets the leaf. I used a sharp dark green Prismacolor pencil for this and think it really helped to add the contrast I needed. 
I also brightened up some of the lighter areas on that waterline with a white colour pencil and used a lighter kelp green to build on some of those mid-tone areas as well. Then it was back to the white pencil to further define and brighten up the highlights in the water around the frog and add a bit more highlight and texture to the skin on his back too. Lastly, I went over with a yellow green pencil to add definition to the veins on the lily pad. And I used more dark green to darken up the shadow under the frog's belly. I also added a bit more white, and to be honest, I probably went a bit overboard on the coloured pencil, but overall, I'm really quite pleased with how it turned out and the end result. But let me know what you think by leaving a comment in the box below, as I really love reading your comments. And if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already. So with all that done, it was time to call this frog painting complete and peel off the frog tape to reveal a nice crisp border. Don't forget to go and check out the other videos in this totally awesome challenge and show them some support as well. I'll leave a link to Dina's channel in the description box for you. So thank you to Dina for setting this challenge up and thank you to all of you who've watched this video and made it to the end. Have a great weekend, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!